Kevin Lacroix trucks to Delaware Speedway as the points leader on the heels of a strong win in the rain. Now, NASCAR returns to where it all began. Delaware Speedway is a racer's racetrack. This half-mile stadium has given birth to some of Canada's true blue-collar, grinded-out stars. And tonight, you'll witness an avalanche of horsepower clashing with emotion. Welcome to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing here on TSN. We're in Delaware, Ontario. This half-mile speedway plays host to the Fast at a Choco 250 presented by Haviland. I'm Dave Bradley. Alongside me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is trackside. Adam, the series last visited Delaware in 2013 where Pete Shepard outlasted J.R. Fitzpatrick for the win in an exciting race. Dave, this southwestern Ontario track is legendary. It has strong roots locally, but also nationally. This was the birthplace of Cascar, Canada's first national touring series. And it's a tough little place to get around. You can see that inside pit wall, and that collects damage if you ever have trouble here on the front straightaway. Kevin Lacroix leads the points after his big win at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, as we mentioned in the rain. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper team has built a new oval car for this season. They look to contend for a championship. And Andrew Ranger sits solidly in second with the debut of the new Mopar M1 engine. And joining the tour here at Delaware, 16-year-old Armani Williams from Detroit Michigan. The youngster drove in the Arca Truck Division last season. He's in a CBRT car here today with mentoring from DJ Kennington. And you can see the race for autism on the hood. Armani Williams so proud being diagnosed on the spectrum to have a platform this large to raise awareness. Let's send it to Todd Trackside. Thanks, guys. For the first time ever, NASCAR Pinty Series drivers participated in group qualifying. Drivers in each group were given five minutes to post their quickest time, and at the end of the session, it was the number 27 Mopar Parts Dodge of Andrew Ranger for Broxton Pond, Quebec, who posted the quickest time of 19.311 seconds, winning his first E3 Spark Plugs Pole Award of the year. Starting alongside Ranger on the front row, that's the winner of our first event of the season, Kevin Lacroix in the number 74. Winner at CT MP. This is the maiden voyage for this brand new oval car. He's hoping for another good night. Let's send it to Oliver and Scarlett Ferguson for the command. saw Oliver Ferguson there without his headphones on. He wanted to feel the full feeling of this horsepower firing up on the front stretch here at Delaware. Dave, he's excited to be here and so am I. Delaware Speedway, such an important oval track in Canada. And we'll ride on board with a number of drivers here today, including the number 21 of Jason White. But let's take a look at your E3 spark plug starting lineup as the cards begin to roll. Andrew Ranger on pole. Kevin Lacroix starts alongside him. Then row number two, Stephen Matthews. Matthews and Alex LeVay in the 32. Back to the third row is Alex Tagliani on the inside, and Noel Dowler makes his return to the series starting sixth. Rolling off seventh, DJ Kennington on the inside, and on the outside, the 22, Donald Teach. Row number five has defending series champion Caden Lapsovich and Adam Martin in the nine. Good qualifying effort. Mark Dilley back in the 0-2, and Larry Jackson in the 25 at row six. Row number seven, Jason Hathaway alongside Jason White. And then we head back to the eighth row where we'll find the Dumoulin brothers. LP Dumoulin on the inside, JF on the outside. Armani Williams, there he is in the number 28, and Anthony Simone in the number 95. That makes up your final row, number nine. Big story, Anthony Simone at the back spun out and crashed in qualifying. He was among the fastest cars in practice earlier today, Dave. And there is the 2017 Dodge Ram Rebel Pace Truck. Brand new for the series. Here this year, we'll be pacing the field at every single stop. Here we have a look at DJ Kennington, an interesting camera angle for his 123rd consecutive 
start in the series with more on today's race let's go to todd lewis thanks guys here's a couple of quick cars to keep an eye on in tonight's race qualifying third the 15 of stephen matthews he's run with us before the pinty series this looks like it's just going to be a one-off and he's looking to have a good night tonight a little further back qualifying sixth the number five of noel dowler he's hoping to race a few more events especially out west maybe in toronto maybe back at ctmp again whatever they can put together but these two drivers qualified well and they have run well here before there you see him lining up that's row number two just behind of andrew ranger who's slowing to let the field bunch up in behind coming off of turn number four we're looking for the green flag here in the choco fast any 250 presented by Hamlin. tony Devonti waving the green here at delaware speedway tony Devonti has seen a lot of races here at delaware speedway not sure he's seen any from the flag stand for the first time. Look at this bunch up deeper in the field. The 18 of Tagliani into oh. the 22. Hard contact. Donald Teague into the wall. Larry Jackson with nowhere to go right underneath the 22 machine of Teague all on lap number one, Dave. Oh boy, Tony Novotny after waving that green was still climbing out of the flag stand and the caution flag waves for the first time. Have another look at what happened. Noel Dowler made an aggressive move to the bottom. There's Tag. <laughs> Adam Martin got airborne off the front tire of the 22 as they made contact. I'm not sure if something broke on Tagliani's car. He just drove straight towards the wall. Donald Teague is okay, but visibly upset in the infield. His night is done early here in Delaware. The Fast Eddie Choco 250 from Delaware Speedway is brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. And by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. Getting set for our first restart of the night. Kevin Lacroix, your new leader, Andrew Ranger, will start up alongside on the outside. The green flag waves once again, and we're finally back underway after a cleanup here on the front stretch. Dave, you can see those character bumps down the front stretch of Delaware Speedway. This is an old racing service, and it's tricky for these drivers. A lot of these racers have never raced here at Delaware Speedway. Yeah, drivers like Caden Laksevich has never seen this place, nor has the 18 of Alex Tagliani as we look to the back of his car out of the nose of DJ Kennington. Up on the outside, though, the five of Noel Dowler. And Tagliani all over the back end of 15, Stephen Matthews, and he's got him stacked up behind him. And that's what happens here at Delaware Speedway, these long corners. If you're handling better, you're a long time in the corners of Delaware. So if you've got a better handling car, you're all up over the rear end of the car in front of you. Mark Dilley is tucked up underneath the back bumper of that five. Dilley back behind the wheel of the 0-2. Matthew Skinnell drove it at the opening race of the season at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. On board the three of Jason Hathaway. He goes to work, and Hathaway is a driver who knows his way around this place. This is where he cut his racing team. And Jason Hathaway is one of very few drivers, as Anthony Simone making a move from the back of the pack, who's won on oval tracks and won on road courses, Dave, but he's never won at his home track, Delaware Speedway. That was a battle for 10th spot as we look up towards the front of the field, a dice for third. You got Stephen Matthews in the 15, Alex Tagliani in the 18, DJ Kennington in there. You see a move as Dilly gets underneath the five of Noel Dowler. So Dilly is starting to march to the front now. Well, getting hung up on the outside. Mark Dilly is a patient driver. He'll wait for his opportunity to get in line, and then he'll start picking cars off as the race car will allow him as we go on board with Jason White. Very excited about his ride for this weekend, Dave. That's a battle for 10th on the racetrack. Simone is going to dive underneath White and take over the position. Uh, Scott Steckley prepared car that looked fast in practice is out early and Todd standing by with the driver. Some significant damage to the 22 machine on lap number one. Car owner Scott Steckley is surveying. Randy Steckley as well. Driver Donald Teage out also surveying. I mean, Donald, this is not what we wanted to see in the opening lap of this race. Oh no, you know, I think uh, we got
had a good start. We passed three cars on the first corner, uh, the, the corner three, three and four. And I was on side of him, uh, Tagliani, and I passed him. And nobody told him or he didn't see me. He pushed me on the wall. I can't believe that, you know, Tagliani did that on the first lap. Can you imagine? That's a pro driver or an amateur. Obviously a lot of frustration down here, guys. And they'll make repairs to that car, but Donald Teague expects it to be at Autodrome Chaudière. And he's understandably upset. Here's a driver who's going to run a handful of races. He's not in it for the point standings. He just wants to come out and have fun. And he's racing in one of the best prepared cars in the series. And he didn't make it to the completion of lap number one. Pretty frustrating, you're right, but he was so fast in practice. We look forward to seeing him at Autodrome shooting air. Look at that battle for third, though. Stephen Matthews, the white and blue car. You see him at the top of the screen right now, battling with the 17 of DJ Kennington. That has been a tight one for the last couple of laps. The APC number 76 of Keaton Lapsovich there, too. Great to see APC Auto Park Centers on that race car for this race. Would love to see them on the car for some additional races, Dave. And look at DJ Kennington stock the 15 of Matthews. This driver has more laps at Delaware Speedway than anybody in the field. He can almost ride your bumper and make your car loose without you even knowing he's there doing it. Okay, he knows, he knows he's there doing that. <laughs> yeah, he definitely gave Matthews the 15 a boost in three and four, and there he does it again in one and two. That's a, I told you once, and now I'm moving you as Steven Matthews gathers it back up. Here comes Lachovic to the inside. Pedaling as hard as he can. When the door opens, you want to take advantage. Caden Lapsovich going to slide through for the fourth position. Looks like Annie and Dilly have caught the battle as well. Out in front continues to be the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix, followed by the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Now it's DJ Kennington in third, but the leader into lap traffic is Armani Williams. A good rookie move. He looked in his mirror, saw the leader, and pulled to the inside. And we ride on board the Race for Autism Foundation number 28 of Armani Williams from Gross Point, Michigan, Dave. In 15th spot, having a clean run so far, and that's exactly what he needs to do in his first NASCAR Pinty Series start. And that's their goal. They want to be there for the checkered flag. They want to survive the race, learn as he goes. Right now, Andrew Ranger closing in behind. Looks like Ranger will take the inside path around Armani Williams. And we mentioned it off the top, the Mopar M1 engine, brand new for the NASCAR Pinty Series here in 2017. It's 120 pounds lighter than one of those built engines that Andrew Ranger was using last year. It is fully NASCAR approved. It's aluminum block, aluminum heads. It makes a ton of horsepower. And Andrew Ranger was very, very happy with it with a second place finish at the opening race of the season. Twice every lap, these cards are hard on the brakes, hard on the throttle. That 120 pounds is going to come in handy, Dave. Well, Kevin Lacroix seems to have a pretty good handle on this track early. He's your leader. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN as we pick up a battle for ninth spot here at Delaware Speedway. Alex LeBay and Noel Dowler. And a reminder, Alex LeBay in that Can-Am number 32 and the 95 of Anthony Simone both started at the back of the field. Unapproved adjustments after qualifying. Of course, Simone's team had to do a lot of repairs. Wow, up the wall goes Steve Matthews. So the French stretch wall, all of the walls here at Delaware Speedway are jersey barrier style. So they sort of kick out at the bottom. So when you clip the wall, it'll suck the car in and it'll jump right up. Have a look. Matthews just gets up out of the groove well off the corner and just takes the car, jumps it in the air. Lifted the front wheels off the ground. And that'll get your attention behind the wheel. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on that car, make sure there's no damage to it. A battle for eighth spot, though, as LeBay continues his mark. He has been very quick. I've been watching this car the last number of laps, and he is really turning up the pace. And another one of those drivers with no experience here. So off the top of my head, Alex LeBay, Caden Lapsovich, Alex Tagliani, not Mark Dilley in this <laughs> Leland sponsored number 024 he's got plenty of races under his belt here at delaware and simone a veteran late model driver as well he's done a lot of laps here at delaware speedway another driver who's already won twice here in the nascar 50 series the 17 of dj kennington working lap traffic the 04 of jf dumoulin in the spectra premium dodge is a lap down 
And J.F. Dumoulin gets way up out of the way of this battle for position. It's early in the race, no point in fighting amongst the leaders. As we ride on board the Chaco number three Kubota sponsored entry of Jason Hathaway riding behind Alex Tagliani. I was just gonna say, it doesn't look it from this vantage point, but when you ride on board, these cars are bouncing and hopping. They're really struggling for grip on this older surface. Every driver we talk to before the race talks about the roughness of the racetrack. And it's not an abrasive rough. It's a, it'll pitch the car and move the car a lane at a time. Very unpredictable what it'll do to these drivers. Well, we, we've always known about the Delaware Hill on the backstretch, and that's just a unique feature of Delaware Speedway. It's been there since the track was built as we look at a battle for ninth spot here on the racetrack. And there goes Kevin Lacroix over the Delaware Hill and down into turn number three. It was a great view. It's like a hump. Turn two is in a hump. And if you get up the outside, you can actually get a great run down the hill into turn number three. And that battle for ninth between the 02 of Mark Dilley and the 95 of Anthony Simone as they continue to go side by side just ahead of your race leader. And Kevin Lacroix with a sizable lead over Andrew Ranger, but this is not what a race leader wants to see. He wants one lane or the other to get the advantage. Well, there you see the innovative plumbing number 95 of Simone. He's going to duck to the inside. The leader will go around on the outside. Now we have to tuck to the bottom to try and make it around Mark Dilley. Four positions, still tightly bunched. Nobody really pushing the issue, but one mistake could make a big difference. We're looking at fourth all the way back to eighth. There you can hear the engine breathe that as it goes over some of these humps. The wheels actually lifting off to the ground almost all the way. And problems in turn number one, the Halmore plumbing number. 21 of Jason White goes around. This will draw the second caution of the day here at Delaware Speedway. Doesn't appear as though we hit anything in that 21 machine. This another car prepared out of the Scott Steckley stables. And just looped it going into turn number one there. I was trying to listen to see if the rear tires chattered on the racetrack. I didn't hear that, but turn one is a place where you can easily lose control of one of these cars. Business picking up on pit lane, Todd. The leader makes his scheduled stop for fuel. They will fill him up with Sunoco race fuel, send him back out. He'll be good to go the distance, then take tires. The 27 car immediately ahead of him running second is taking the tires now. They too will also make fuel stop. As big a racetrack as this is, pit road is so very tight here at Delaware Speedway. It looked like Andrew Ranger just backed into the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Have another look. I think they did touch. They did. Andrew Ranger in the left front wheel. You can see a tire mark on the back bumper of the 27 Mopar Dodge. And back down pit lane comes the 74. Left side tires going on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And we're just getting word as Andrew Ranger getting fuel in the Mopar 27. He's being penalized one lap for pulling up to pit on the last pit stop, Dave. And you see the crew obviously unaware. They tell him to go and Andrew Ranger being held in his pit box. Lacroix being pulled back so he can get around the tail end of the Mopar Dodge. And Lacroix will rejoin the field, but a penalty in the early going for Ranger. That hands the lead to the 76 of young Kate Lapsevich. Welcome back to the Chaco Fast Eddie 250 presented by Havilland. I'm Dave Bradley. With me in the booth is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits. Green flag flies once again here at Delaware Speedway. We're 108 laps into a 250 lap race. Caden Lapsovich leads the way to the green flag, but Alex LeBay fighting hard on the high side. We saw Kevin Lacroix earlier on make the outside work on a start. Alex LeBay looking to do the same. With that contact with Andrew Ranger on pit lane, it hit the left front wheel. Will it have, or will it make a difference on that car as we get back to green flag laps? Well, and Kevin Lacroix will know right away because if the steering wheel is not sitting in the same spot to make the car go straight, it means one of your front wheels is pointed in the wrong direction. Riding on board with the bumper to bumper dodge. The report we're getting from pit side is that indeed the toe is bent on the 74. Time will tell how that car's gonna perform, but right now he's falling back. 
Casey, the three of Jason Hathaway in the Kubota Dodge, the 95 of Anthony Simone has pulled on to pit lane. And issues on there, Tom? Yeah, guys, just checking on that 95 team. They remain along pit road. They believe it is an axle problem of some sort. They are working on the rear end of that car, trying to diagnose it. Driver Anthony Simone remains in the car for the moment, but looks like the steering wheel's coming off and the window netting coming down. His day is done. What a frustration for Anthony Simone. He has shown lightning speed in both races this year. Just can't seem to catch a break and get to the end of one of these events. Alex LeBay continues to control the field here at the front. Good battle. A little bit deeper in the field. Not for position, though. The 0-2 of Mark Dilley is down a lap. And how about the 18? The Lowe's Dodge of Alex Tagliani. And crossways goes to three of halfway up on the outside. That's a slick groove today. Once you lose that inside groove, generally you're going to lose positions. I've been surprised on the start and the restart. The outside lane has worked. But under green flag conditions, it seems once you get out there, you're in trouble. And it did happen to Jason Hathaway as he lost a couple of spots after Tagliani got underneath him. One to the 15 of Stephen Matthews in the Bill Matthews Motors Ford and the 17 of DJ Kennington as well. Up at the front, Caden Lapsovich closing the gap. I hate to keep talking about this, but the top three drivers have never raced the Delaware Speedway. Traditionally, this is a track where experience is king. You know what? I was talking to Kane Lapsovich's dad about that earlier on in the in the pit area, and I said, he's never been here. Is that a problem? And he says, you know what? caden has got a pretty good record on tracks he's never visited in the past. You look at last year, he did okay. Listen to that horsepower on Jason White's number 21 as he heads down these long Delaware straightaways. Armani Williams carrying an onboard camera on the Race for Autism Foundation, number 28 as well. He's looking pretty good. His hands are quite calm on that steering wheel, just doing his thing. And you know, we can't mention enough how DJ Kennington, the driver of that Castro Edge number 17, helping to mentor young Armani Williams. When he was the same age as Armani, he was cutting his teeth in the series, and the learning curve was steep, Dave. It was indeed. Now DJ Kennington finds himself on the back bumper of the 15 of Stephen Matthews. These two have been in this position before, and this time Matthews just opened the door a little bit and let him go rather than being booted out of the way. I was going to say, the rear bumper of Stephen Matthews 15 is going to look a lot like the front bumper of the Castrol Edge 17. As now Andrew Ranger closing in. Keep in mind, Ranger a lap down from the penalty on pit road. Kevin Lacroix, the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge, not quite as strong as it was in the early going of this race. Remember how many laps he led in the beginning. He's now back up to sixth spot as he moves underneath the Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway. And Hathaway seems to be putting a lot of steering wheel into this car. It's not easy to diagnose a car's handling, but he seems to be going up the racetrack on corner exit quite a bit, and it's hard to make a fast run at Delaware Speedway if you can't keep the car on the bottom. As here, Alex Tagliani takes on the second position from Gaden Lapsovich. Tagliani, after having troubles on the opening lap with Donald Teague, has settled into a rhythm here in the Lowe's EpiPen number 18, Dodge Challenger. And he gets around the APC number 76 of Caden Lapsovich. There's your race leader just in front. So Alex LeBay hasn't been able to open that gap too far as those two battle. No, he's running at a competitive pace right now, but not the blistering lap times we saw Kevin Lacroix run early in the goal. Good luck at the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dune Lane, the 02 Avenue Auto Parts Ford Fusion of Mark Dilley. We ride on board the Leland Industries Ford of Dilly. It's a battle for ninth spot on the racetrack. Both cars are lap down. And you saw when we went on board with Dilly, you saw how close they come to the inside wall coming out of turn number four. Dave, if your car's handling right, you can almost reach out the window and slap that tractor tire as you go by. Not a lot of cars able to do that here today. A lot of back ends washing out around the corners. Interesting track, too, with the concrete patch down towards the inside of these turns. And it's almost like a sidewalk as you get to the apron. And you can affect the handling of your car by using 
that concrete flat at the bottom of the track, how you try to clip that or how you avoid it, depending how your car is working. Man of the mission, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. He is now pressuring your race leader in the Can-Am Kappa Ford Fusion, Alex LeBay. Watch how much lower Tagliani's running in the corners. A full car width lower than Alex LeBay through the ends of this racetrack. And to the inside, he's able to get on the gas sooner. It's a drag race down the back straightaway for the race lead here at Delaware Speedway. Tagliani outbreaks him into turn number three. He'll take the line off of four. New race leader on lap 132 is Alex Tagliani. Sons, those two cars got side by side and allowed the APC number 76 of Lapsovich to close the gap. And the defending series champion, now comfortably in third, will be able to pressure the 32 of Alex LeBay. And at this point, they're really just turning laps. There's more than 100 laps to go. They've used up a lot of rubber. Some of them have put on fresh tires. Some of them haven't. Right now, it's just a matter of finding a pace. And we've got a problem on pit road. Mark Dilly heading down pit lane, the cockpit full of smoke. Todd Lewis is on hand down near that pit stall. But Mark Dilly doesn't seem to be in a big hurry to get to the attention of his Leland crew. Smoke coming out from the 0-2. It's an agitated driver that is in the seat. Mark Dilley trying to get that helmet off and get himself out of that smoking car. You can see that that is a very uncomfortable situation. And you can smell that. It sounds like rear-end gear, or it smells like rear-end gear fluid that's burning up in that car. So Mark Dilley will, in fact, be in a hurry to get out. As Andrew Ranger gets around the 15 of Stephen Matthews, that's not for position, but Dave, this is... It's a battle for fifth spot as Lacroix makes it stick down low. Here comes Hathaway in the three as well, looking to take advantage, but it looks like Matthew is going to be able to hang on to that sixth position. It's always, for a exciting. While. <laughs> it's always exciting to watch Steve Matthews race. He really does race every lap as though it's the last lap, so you know he's going to fight hard for position. Adam, you talked a little earlier about saving those Goodyear tires underneath these race cars. Big tip of the hat goes to the good folks at Goodyear. Robin and Craig Fairtrack. Big supporters of the NASCAR Pinty Series. They've been here every single race. They do a great job. And after that race we had in the rain at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, you know Craig is back at the shop grooving more rain tires <laughs> for later on this season. Problem in turn two. And it's Armani Williams around in the number 28. This will draw the caution here on lap 160. The and car rolling once again. That's a good thing for Armani. He'll get it turned around. No real damage, but we'll ride along and see what happens. Boy, and that was well into the corner. That's a little bit later than we normally see them break loose. That looked like when he was getting back on the gas, that's when the back end came around. But more opportunity for strategy. Pit stop time as the leaders come down pit lane and Todd is there. Todd, what's up? From the lead, the 18 makes a pit stop. Two fresh Goodyears going on the right side. He's going to have to back out to get around the 76 car. Gabe Lapsovich will get two rights and two left side tires. Alex Tagliani getting passed on pit road as he leaves. And the Lapsovich crew having trouble with the right side rubber getting it on. That has been a long stop. It is indeed. So Kate Lapsovich will lose a ton of track position there. You see a lot of jockeying for position off this tight, tight pit lane here at Delaware Speedway. Alex LeBay in the Ford continues to lead. The Dodge Ram Rebel pace truck paces the field here at Delaware Speedway as we get sent for restart number three. Teams were busy this week, though. Alex Tagliani visited the Lowe's store in London, Ontario, and students from Woodland Heights Public School got a chance to sign the trunk lid of that number 18 car. It's a cool opportunity. Dumoulin Compétition renewed their pledge to race against cancer as they team up with the Quebec Cancer Foundation to raise funds for cancer research. Also, Joey McComb and CBRT helped out at a Toronto area Tim Hortons for their Camp Day initiative. Nothing like having a NASCAR stock car coming through the drive through The NASCAR Pinty Series teams support many groups. Armani Williams drives for autism, and many teams support the Laps for MD initiative. Brad Miller and his group's racing efforts. Dave, we're about to go back to green flag racing. Kevin Lacroix and the 18 of Alex Tagliani will lead them down to green. 
slowly, very slowly, as they make contact. Laquan Tagliani rubbing off turn number four as they come to the green. We're back underway. Oh, and there's big contact into turn number one. There we saw NASCAR flagman Dan Hawkins waving the green flag. A bit of a different look this season on the flag stand. That start seemed to hurt Alex Tagliani. Managed to get down and in behind a race leader, but not much of a challenge going into turn number one for that first lap back in the green. And Jason Hathaway slides up the track just a little bit, moving Caden Lapsovich way up to the outside. Stephen Matthews in there, too, in the number 15. Alex LeBay, who was in the race lead, did come back down pit lane to pick up two extra good years, so he has four fresh tires, and he's set for the finish. Here are the Chaco Fast Daddy 250. Presented by Havilland. Oh, big trouble on the front stretch. Stephen Matthews hard into the outside wall, then hard into the inside wall. Noel Downer slides into the wreck as well. On board, Armani Williams checks up. He's able to get around unscathed. And that was a huge hit. You can see Matthews moving around inside that Ford Fusion. Contact started it between the 76 and the 15. Have another look from onboard Team Lapsovich's car. It looks like Stephen Matthews must have thought he was clear of the 76. He just moved right up the racetrack. This should give us an even better look. That's a big hit right there. Just a little contact, straightened him back up as he hit the inside wall, and Matthews is out and surveying the damage, which is significant. As his father, Bill Matthews, looks on from the inside of pit wall. Thankfully, Stephen Matthews out of the car and all right, but the car is not. Damage to the five as well. We'll reset the field under a red flag here in Delaware. A beautiful evening for a race here in Delaware, Ontario. It's race number two of the 2017 season for the NASCAR Pinty Series. And we'll try and restart again. Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagliani once again rubbing as they head to the, the start line. And again they hit as the green flag waves. That was big contact as they both tried to get on the loud pedal. The cars got squirrely. One car coming out just in front of the race leaders. He's going to let them all go by before he gets into line. That was a wise choice, Dave. It is getting down to the nitty-gritty here. We're 176 laps. This time we crossed the line out of a scheduled 250. So if you're going to try to make your move to the front, you better start doing it. And Kevin Lacroix back out in front. Remember, he led most of the early stages of this race. As we see Alex LeBay side by side with DJ Kennington for the third position. Just seven cars left on the lead lap. And this is a dandy of a battle here for third. And Kennington's going to try and make that outside move work in the Castro Edge Dodge. With less than 75 laps to go, it's not panic time yet, Dave, but you want to fight for every position, whether you're on the inside, the outside, you're going to dig for everything you can. Should mention, too, the three-car Jason Hathaway looks a little bit different than it has in past years. That car prepared out of the DJ Kennington race shop as well, so a different feel for Hathaway here today. Yeah, you'd have to think that is a different feel. Even though Craig Masters still the crew chief on the three-car, Jason Hathaway the driver, it has to make a difference being prepared in someone else's facility. And we have said this once before at the end of last year, but this is Jason Hathaway's last race. For now. At least he, that's what he tells us. Well, he is a race car driver, and he'll be back at a racetrack. And Ed Hackinson, also a race car driver, the owner of the three-car, this ex Pinecrest racer, once was a Yamaha factory snowmobile rider. He's owned a full-time team in NASCAR and NASCAR for close to 25 years. Just loves racing and made it into a successful business with Chaco branded clothing. And so successful with Chaco Authentics and then Fast Eddie's and bringing his daughter on board to Jamie Hackinson. Quite a dynasty they've built. And I, it's sad to see this might be their last race. He started all 123 NASCAR Pinty Series races. Well, his son-in-law is having a decent outing, sitting in fourth spot in the thick of this battle. Let's see. Dice for the top spot begins to heat up. Tagliani took a look underneath the bumper to bumper. 74 of Lacroix, little bump, and away he goes. Beautiful short track move by Tagliani on Lacroix. And now that Lacroix is up out of the bottom groove, let's see where he's able to fit back in. Tagliani with the lead. Here goes LeBay for second. Remember, only two brand new good 
figures on that 18, the last pit stop. Crew chief Tyler Case deciding to put the 18 out there and get track position. And it seems to have worked out for Alex Tagliani, who's your new race leader. Out in front, let's see if he pulls away or if the field can stay within striking distance. Right now, Armani Williams in front of those race leaders. So it's going to be tough for Tagliani to open any gap as he approaches slow traffic. Saw a quick flash of the 76 on Pet Lane. They're fixing a broken tie rod. That's keeping that car off the track right now. But you have to mention the this battle for fifth spot between the 74 and the 27. These two getting together on pit lane a little earlier. Will they play nice? They do in a turn one. And of course, Ranger back on the lead lap through the benefit of a free pass on one of her recent cautions. So he is back among the top five battling for position. How about that driver sitting in second though? The 32 of Alex LeBay with brand new crew chief in 2017, Mario Gosselin. Well, and the big difference there is it's full-time crew chief, Mario Gosselin. Of course, Mario races in the NASA car Xfinity Series. He helps crew chief that race car as it tours the United States. But Alex LeBay has to be thrilled to have Mario Gosselin at the track for all of the NASCAR Pinty Series events this year. Driver's doing a bang up job though. Keeping Alex Tagliani honest as we're just over 50 laps to go here in the Choco Fast Eddie 250 presented by Haviland. Alex LeBay closing in on the back end of that 18 of Alex Tagliani. I've been watching the line Alex is running the last number of laps. It reminds me of the race in Edmonton. He was dominant in that event, but he ran a defensive line for so long that eventually Andrew Ranger was able to just blow by on the inside, Dave. Well, it's a battle for the lead. We'll take a quick break and we'll bring you back for the finish here in Delaware. Alex Tagliani continues to lead the second stop of 2017 for the NASCAR Pinty Series, but Alex LeBay is in tow, and now the three car of Jason Hathaway is right in that battle as well. Boy, oh boy, a driver with so many laps at Delaware Speedway and so many reasons to want to win here at Delaware Speedway. Jason Hathaway showing a great deal of speed, and let's not count this driver out either. Kevin Lacroix is still in the hunt. He was so, so strong in the early going of this race, it looks like that minor knock on pit lane might have upset the balance of that race car, but also the WeatherTech Dotsie number 47 of LP Jumelay having a decent run here in seventh spot and a battle for the lead. Here comes LeBay, uncontested to the inside of the 18. Tagliani trying to fight back and drive down the race but I'm not sure what he's got left in that Lowe's 18 machine. Alex LeBay out in front. You remember, Alex LeBay had four brand new good years. That last stop, so he might have a little bit more stick left on this very slippery racetrack. We rode on board with Jason Hathaway just about slapped the outside wall at a turn two. He's been fighting a loose race car since the drop of the green here earlier on this afternoon, and the temperature outside is starting to drop just a little bit here. And Jason Hathaway has his hands full with that three machine way up the racetrack coming off the corner. That allows DJ Kennington to close the gap. And one of our sp spotters reporting oil in turns one and two. So NASCAR checking into reports of oil in turns one and two. Well, and you can see Hathaway oh, oh. really struggling to control that race car. Jason Hathaway found that oil in turn one, two, if it's there. He's the only one sliding up the racetrack, so not sure if something on the track or something amiss with a Kubota number three. It did cost him a spot. Now the caution flag waves. So Alex LeBay will low up here on the front straightaway. So NASCAR going to err on the side of caution and go and check things out in turn number one. And along pit road, crew chief Mario Gosselin and car owner Alain Manier look on as Alex LeBay leads at Delaware. Getting down to the final few laps here in the Fast Eddie Choco 250 presented by Haviland at Delaware Speedway. Who has stuff left in the tank? Alex LeBay has been the quickest over the last several laps, but Alex Tagliani is right there as well. It'll be the Alex and Alex show as we take the green once again here at Delaware Speedway. Dan Hawkins waves the green and they're off into turn number one. A pretty good start for Tagliani, not so much for Hathaway. Hathaway again, the back end of the Kubota number three steps out. Tagliani fishtails down the back straight as he jumps hard on the gas, but everybody continues 
continues to chase the Can-Am Ford Fusion. LeBay and Tagliani both got a great jump on that start. It allowed Tagliani to get right down in behind LeBay before losing any more positions. Well, you can see the hands moving on the three car. Jason Hathaway, possibly a tire going down. Battle for fifth there with the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Hathaway able to get back to the inside there, but he can't keep it low. So something amiss on that race car. What a great job for Dumoulin. That car has not been good all day long, but when it counts, here he is in the top five battling with the leaders. And you know what? Those two have really had a weekend to forget. J.F. Dumoulin has been doing his best in a fairly new race car, so he's trying to get a handle on that one through practice. He's picked up time during the race, so that'll help his confidence going into the next stop. But L.P. Dumoulin, he's done this before. And problems for one of the front runners. We've seen him struggling on the racetrack for the last number of laps. He rolls slowly to the crew. And what a tough, tough ending for Jason Hathaway. It sure is, guys. It's a difficult way to say goodbye for Jason Hathaway. They thought they had a flat tire. The hood goes up as he's along pit road. The problems may be a little more serious than that. And it's a frustrating end of the night for Jason Hathaway. Yeah, the gloves come off. You can see the dejection uh, written all over his face as he'll hop out and watch the end of this race just like the rest of us. But look at the gap that Alex LeBay has been able to build up over the second spot of Alex Tagliani. As you watch the two race cars, very similar on the racetrack. Similar lines, similar lap times, but LeBay has that comfortable eight or 10 car length advantage. So he can really gauge in his rear view mirror if he needs to turn up the wick at all or whether he's driving at the perfect pace. Well, he can lift the visor just a little bit and somewhat relax. He's got three laps to go this time across the stripe. He'll have a look in the mirror and you'll see the Lowe's Dodge of Alex Tagliani is back about half a straightaway now. And all he wants to hope for with three laps remaining is clean and green on the racetrack. Does not want to sacrifice this advantage. Alex Tagliani trying to do what he can to close in, but it does not look like that gap is changing. And the good news for Tagliani, he's got nobody on his back bumper either, so he's solidly in second spot, so he can work around and try and find a line. But Alex LeBay strong once again through three and four. He'll see the white flag this time by. The one thing that escaped Alex LeBay in 2016 was reliability. The things that'll see you to the end of a race week in and week out. He had a top five last week at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And Dave, he is two quarters away from a win. He started shotgun on the field, but Alex LeBay will ease it out of turn number four. He'll win for the first time in 2017. Alex Tagliani rolls home in second and finishing third on his home track. A solid run through the field all day for the 32. We'll talk to him in victory lane. Easily the strongest car here in race number two of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series. Alex LeBay in victory lane. He's ready to hop out, Todd. Alex LeBay, after a hard-fought victory, is out of that number 32 machine to the huge cheers from his team. Huge congratulations to his team. Alex, Alex Labbe had to start at the back because of a problem that was discovered as they wheeled the car out onto the grid. This was a victory you earned tonight. Yeah, that was a tough one. I mean, uh, can't thank my guys enough. I had, I had the best car here tonight. They gave me the best pit stop. I mean, we beat everybody on pit lane. We, I think we beat everybody on the track. I mean, that was a team effort. It was a awesome night for the can -Am 4 team. It was awesome, awesome one. A great night for Alex Labbe, winner here at Delaware. And that smile says it all. Big cheers from the crowd and hugs all around as we'll take a look at the top 10 finishers here in Delaware. LP Dumoulin coming home with a solid fourth place tonight. Brother J.F. Dumoulin finishes seventh. And how about Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine? Recovers from problems on lap one for the top 10 finish. Todd's was second place. Alex Tagliani, a second place run here at Delaware. That's a hard fought night. Alex LeBay had four tires at the end. You got two. I don't know if that was the difference or not. Yeah, for sure. It was, uh, you know, good strategy from their part. Uh, 
on on the restarts that we were always second, uh, we got caught uh, out of the pit lane, you know, from a very tight pit in uh, and pit out. But uh, you know, basically, it's bittersweet, you know, for us because we have a good second place. We make some points. Uh, the EpiPen Lowe's uh, race team did a fantastic job, but we started with like a pinch onto my heart because we we got together with my teammate, and that's not the way you want to start the race. Um, you know, I got caught on the bottom with Dowler. I came up loose, never thought there was somebody up there, and I never heard anything on the spotter side, so I just took as much road as I needed just to save the car, and uh, he was there. So, uh, plus he's a good guy and a good friend, so just, you know, whoever would have been in, it, it's not good to do, but, you know, with this guy, it's just, uh, you know, that's why I, I'm, I'm kind of happy about the second place, but, you know, sad for him. Thanks, Alex. Well, they'll hash it out in the pits for sure. Your point standings after two events. Kevin Lacroix still on top. It is an all-Quebec top five with the Dumoulin brothers fourth and fifth. And Alex LeBay with his win comes within three points of the points lead. Third place tonight, the 17 Castrol Edge Dodge. DJ Kennington, a familiar sight on the podium at Delaware Speedway. And the whole family here to celebrate with you. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I wish we were on the top spot. But congratulations to Alex. Uh, we missed it early today, but... Man, we really fought back hard with the Castro Edge Dodge, and thanks to Castro, all of our uh, sponsors and supporters, Brian Cathcart, and uh, there's so many of them, Canadian Linen and CM, CDM, CIM Metals and Country Collision, everybody that helps us, we can't thank you guys enough, and uh, hopefully we can get on uh, a better track here now and get on to Chaudier and have a good run there. Thanks, guys. Well, it's a tough little track here at Delaware Speedway. Always an action-packed race, and today didn't disappoint. It certainly didn't. As we go to the podium, we're Tony Payton from Fast Eddie, and there's Fast Eddie himself, Ed Hackinson handing Alex LeBay the winner's trophy. The number one, because that's what he is right now. Today's race has been brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By Spectra Premium, automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube. So the top three celebrate on the podium here at Delaware Speedway. We'll stay on the ovals for race number three here in 2017. And we go to Autodrome Chaudier, the site of the best oval race of 2016, where that driver right there took the win. For all of us here at TSN, we'll see you next time. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.